Hi guys, I hope you all are doing well and welcome to the fourth video of this entire series where we are talking about Active Directory Federation Service or ADFS. In the last video, I demonstrated you how to create an SSL certificate from Internal Certification Authority. We deployed Active Directory Federation Service role on a domain joint machine. We tested ADFS authentication using IDP initiated sign-on page. We added Office 365 as a relying party trust, and we have seen the user experience when he logs in to portal.office.com when you have ADFS deployed in your environment. In this particular video, we will be talking about few important concepts. Those will help you to get a good understanding of ADFS. We will be discussing what is security token. We will talk about claims in detail. We will discuss what is a claims based application and why you should choose claims based identity option for your organization. There is a very famous example of authentication protocol that you follow each time when you visit an airport. If you want to board a plane, you can't simply walk up to the boarding gate and you just can't show your driving license or the passport and get to the plane. Instead of this, what you do, you first show your driving license or any ID proof to the security agent on the main gate of the airport. Then you go to the ticket counter. From ticket counter, you collect your boarding pass. Once you have the boarding pass, you go to the boarding gate. You show your boarding pass to the boarding gate agent. After verifying your boarding pass, boarding gate agent lets you board the plane. Now, if you check the boarding pass, it includes the information that this boarding pass has been issued by an airline. It has your name. It has the information that you are allowed to board a particular flight. It has the information that you are going to board this flight at this particular time. And this will be your seat number. There are multiple ways to get a boarding pass. You can either collect it from the ticket counter or you can book your flight online and you can print your boarding pass at home. The boarding gate agent doesn't care how the boarding pass was created. They don't care which issuer you used. As long as it is trusted by the airline, it is valid. They only care that it has authentic set of information that give you permission to get on the plane. Now, if we compare this example with ADFS, the bundle of information or the boarding pass is called security token in ADFS. Each security token is signed by the issuer who created it. Any claims based application will consider a user to be authenticated if he presents a valid and a signed token that is issued by a trusted issuer. In this example, the boarding pass was issued by the airlines. That means airlines is the issuer. And you can compare airlines with ADFS because ADFS issues the security tokens to the applications. In this example, plane is the application. Plane doesn't care what sort of ID proof you are showing to the boarding gate agent, whether you have shown your driving license or you have shown your passport. But as long as you have a valid boarding pass, you can board the plane. In the same way, when an application connects to the ADFS server, the application doesn't care if the user was authenticated using NTLM or he was authenticated using Kerberos. Application doesn't care what sort of credentials that user presented for authentication. What sort of authentication method was used? Was it forms based authentication, SSL, or it was integrated Windows authentication. As long as a valid security token that is signed by a trusted issuer is issued to the application, user can get access. 
when ADFS issues a token to an application, it signs the token using token signing certificate. The application that is integrated with ADFS also has your ADFS servers token signing certificate that is used by the application to decrypt the token. Now you must be thinking how application has access to this token signing certificate. So the answer is Federation metadata. This is something that we will be discussing in one of the next videos. But for now, just understand that application also has the token signing certificate of your ADFS server that is used to decrypt the token that is sent or that is issued from the ADFS server. A boarding pass contains some information like your name, flight name, your seat number, and the name of the airlines who has issued this boarding pass. A security token also contains similar information. It has the name of the issuer, that is Federation identifier name of your ADFS server. It contains the name of the application to whom this token is issued. It has the details of the claims. It has the timestamp when this token was issued until what time this token is valid. And it includes token signing certificate that was used by the ADFS server to sign this token. There are multiple types of tokens. Those can be issued by the ADFS server and can be consumed by the application. If an application is using WS Fed protocol, ADFS will send SAML1 token to the application and the format of the token will be XML. If an application supports SAML protocol, then SAML2 token will be sent to the application and the format of the token will be XML. If application supports OAuth protocol, then ADFS will send JOT token to the application and the format of the token will be JSON. And if application supports Open ID Connect protocol, then JOT token will be sent to the application and the format of the token will be JSON. So depending on the protocols that application supports, ADFS will construct the token and will send the token to the application. Now let me show you what sort of information a security token contains. This is a token that was issued for a user when he was trying to access portal.office.com. The first thing that you will see within the token is the time or date when this token was created. This token was created at this date, date of December 2021 at 10.30 and it is going to expire same day after one hour, 11.30. Next thing that you will see, the issuer name. Issuer of this token is my ADFS server and this is the ADFS Federation identifier name. If you go to server manager, and if you go to ADFS management console, let's minimize or close server manager. Right click on ADFS and go to edit Federation service properties. Here you see Federation service identifier that is adfs.office365concepts.com slash ADFS slash services slash trust. Now go back to token and here you can see HTTP ADFS office 365 concepts.com slash ADFS slash services slash trust. So this is the ADFS Federation identifier who has issued this particular token. Next, you will see the name of the application who is going to consume this token. This token is issued for office 365 Microsoft online service. And this is what you can see here. Next, you will see claims. Whenever a user is trying to access Office 365 application, in case of Office 365, two claims or two attributes are issued within the token. One is user principal name, and the second one is immutable ID. 
This is the user principal name of the user who was trying to access portal.office.com. And this is the immutable ID of this particular user. So these are the two claims. Those are sent within the security token. If the application that user is trying to access is portal.office.com. And after claims, you will see the token signing certificate. You will find the token signing certificate next to X509 certificate header. So if you want to check the certificate, copy this till here, not this one. Okay, I'll remove this next part. So go to notepad, paste it here and remove this one. Now save this file and you will save this file with dot CER extension. Close this and open this certificate. Let's close this as well. Okay. Now go to details and go to thumbprint. So let's go to ADFS management console as well and let's go to certificates and let me double click on token signing certificate and go to details. Now here you see this this thumbprint of the certificate starts with 8B and ends with AD and same starts with 8B ends with AD. So this is the token signing certificate that is configured within your ADFS server. Whenever ADFS server will sign a token, it will use the token signing certificate. ADFS provides the logic to authenticate the users in several ways. ADFS can customize every security token as per the application requirement. ADFS server can accept the tokens. Those are issued from another ADFS server from another realm. This is called identity federation. A realm is basically it's a security domain or security boundary for your applications. In this example, these are two different realms. When an application contacts ADFS, ADFS reaches Active Directory to get the user authenticated. Once the user is authenticated, Active Directory returns certain claims to ADFS. Then ADFS constructs a token. It includes the claims within the token and sends that token to the application. Application doesn't directly authenticate the user. It completely relies on the security token that is issued by the ADFS server. A claims based application should know how to validate the incoming security token and how to read the claims. Those are inside the token. Each application is different and not all applications need the same set of claims. One application might need the email address of the user and other application might need department attribute. And ADFS has the ability to customize the security token as per the application requirement. If application one needs email address attribute, ADFS will construct a token. It will include email address attribute or claim within the token and will issue that token to the application. In the same way, it will construct another token. It will add department attribute within the token and will send this token to the application. So ADFS can customize the tokens as per the application's requirement. Now let's understand why you should choose claims based identity. When we talk about Kerberos, Kerberos can't authenticate the users who are in different realm because the domain controller is guarded by the firewall. And if you are working externally, you are expected to use a virtual private network or VPN to access the corporate network. If you have internal application and you have Active Directory, 
you can use integrated windows authentication to achieve many of the benefits those are provided by the claims as long as your application can use integrated windows authentication you do not have to think more about the authentication but claims were designed to provide the flexibility that other protocols may not provide the standard protocols that exchange claims are specifically designed to cross boundaries for example security realms and firewalls with claims it's no longer the application's responsibility to authenticate the users all your application needs is a security token from the issuer and if you are upgrading the security of your infrastructure this will not break your application or there is no need to reconfigure the application claims are issued by a claims provider they are packaged into a security token and this security token is issued to the application here claims provider is active directory and the service that issues the token is security token service or sts that is adfs there are many reasons why you might need something other than windows authentication you might have a web application that is used by the people who do not have accounts in your windows domain or your company has merged with another company and you are having trouble authenticating across two different windows forest that do not have a trust relationship these are a couple of scenarios where claims based identity is the right option for you in the next video we will be talking about endpoints in adfs we will be discussing what are these endpoints what is their use and i will show you how to manage these endpoints from adfs management console and from powershell so if you have learned something new from this particular video please write in comments and please subscribe to the channel thank you guys thank you for your time take care